Alright guys, hope you're well. So, we're gonna be making some mango wine today because uh, I, I really want to try some mango wine. I've never actually had mango wine before. I mean, who hasn't had mango wine? So, we're gonna be making some today and it's going to be a quick, easy drinking recipe, which means as soon as it's done, it's good to drink. Oh yes, this is because it's going to be a sweet wine because I want to make sure I've got those mango notes in there. Basically, alcoholic mango juice. Sounds pretty good to me. So what we're gonna need for this is two kilos of mangoes. Mango is a bit of a delicate flavor, so the more mango you add, the better it's gonna be. Now, if I was gonna be using a demijohn, like such as this one here, would have to add some steeping time in there because having bits inside your demijohn, it normally ends in disaster, puking. Uh, and we don't want that. Um, so we're gonna be doing an on the poke fermentation, which means we're gonna be using a brew bucket. Oh yeah, like this one. Which means it's gonna be in contact with the fruit the whole way through the fermentation. It means there's gonna be a bit more crud in the bottom, but we're gonna get the best flavor we can from these lovely mangoes. So that being said, let's, uh, let's make some mango wine. I'm looking forward to this one. So, to start off with, nothing needs to be sterilized, it just needs to be clean. Because that's cool. Plus, we're going to be boiling, because we want to break down these mango chunks. The freezing has done a lot of the work for us, but still, it's going to be, we want it pulverized and pulped. So, we're going to add some heat to it. So, I'm just going to go through and uh, open up these bags of mango chunks. Oh. Come on, mangoes. And uh, got these lovely, mm, slightly less than two kilos of mango. Really good. Mmm. Hold feet. Anyway, just gonna chuck these in. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna continue until I've added in all of my mangoes. So all of our mango is now inside the pan. I've cleaned everything away. It's so easy when you're using frozen stuff because it's, it's yeah, done, cleared, beautiful. So like I said, nothing needs to be sterilized currently and I will be using a wooden spoon. Some people say you shouldn't use a wooden spoon, but we're gonna be scorching this. It's gonna be boiled. So it's perfectly fine. If you don't wanna use a wooden spoon, don't. That's just how it goes. So I've got two liters of boiling water. Now, I'm using only two liters to break down this, these chunks, I mean, uh, chunks, into basically a puree, because um, then I can add cold water and it makes the process a lot quicker for pitching. So in goes my boiling water. And now I'm just gonna turn this on and uh, we're gonna heat it through and break down all these bits. Oh yes, so uh, this will probably take a few minutes. So it's now been on the heat, on the heat, for about five minutes now. And I've just been going through, stirring it, and just beating up the bits of mango. And more or less, I mean, they're all, some of them are a little bit chunky. Uh, some of the bits that weren't perfectly ripe are still mostly solid, but they are softening up now. So I'm just gonna go through and heat it up. Now, if I had a stick blender, because I used to, but I broke it, uh, I would go through and blitz this down. It would make the process a lot quicker. Without it, I have to heat this slowly. It's no big, uh, no big deal. You can do it with or without. So uh, I'm just gonna carry on. So our mango has been slowly simmering away now for about 15 minutes, and it's looking pretty broken up, to be fair. Uh, not as much as a blender, but good enough just how we roll. So we can turn this off now because uh, we're done with the heating. It's definitely sterilized. The vast majority of the mango has been pulverized into little bits and it smells really good. So what we're going to do now is add in our sugar. So I just got a kilo of white sugar, which is cool. And then we're going to dump it in. Now, as a general rule, just as a general thing as we go, I don't usually count the sugar inside the fruit. Um, 
it just it can be a bit fiddly there's no way to exactly know the uh, sugar amount but i am expecting this to be about 12 percent um, i actually sat down and worked out how much sugar is approximately in this mango uh, it works out it's 12 grams per 100 grams so that's an extra 240 grams of sugar that i'm adding in with my kilo so uh should be good <laughs> but i'm only including around 11 percent so we shall see so mixing in the uh, sugar while it's nice and hot it dissolves a lot easier uh, there we go well that definitely smells good now <laughs> right so in the meantime, I've gone ahead and I've sterilized my brew bucket and also the hydrometer. I used thin bleach and washing up liquid and then rinsed it until it doesn't smell of bleach anymore because, well, you don't want bleach in your booze. So uh, what we're going to do, so I'm just going to leave this to cool down for about 20 minutes because uh, I'm going to put it in my sink, otherwise known as a cold water bath. And we'll be right back. So our sugar has been added in. It is now cold and almost good to go. So I've got my brew bucket already set up. Now we only added in two liters of water into our mango pulp. So I have another three liters inside my kettle that I'm gonna be adding to this to make up to the five liter mark. So just check out my lovely sterile bucket. Mmm, smells clean but not bleachy. So there's my stirring spoon, very important. So in goes the mango and the pulp, put it straight in. Look at that color. I mean, it's not quite as smooth as I would like it to be, but all of the, uh, all of the mango that is ripe is, uh, is given over its flavor. Oh, it smells really good. So I'm gonna use the cold water to rinse out the pan to waste any do we since uh, we've gone to all that effort give it a swirl and apart from the bit I spilt on the side good to go so that's just adding a bit more water and that's gonna look and um, hopefully it's gonna taste as good as it looks so give it a good stir gives it a little bit of aeration. You don't need to go nutty on aeration. I know people love aerating for hours. You don't need to bother. So we've got a couple of additions to add into our mango juice. So first is yeast nutrient. You're gonna need it. We want a good, clean fermentation. So approximately a spoonful, uh, if it's a teaspoon and a half, such as that. Whoops. It doesn't really matter. Um, I've never known it to cause any problems whatsoever. So I'll give that a good stir. I want to make sure it's all tasty. Now, this one is optional. You don't have to add it in, but uh, it's a good idea to do it which is pectylase. Pectylase is a clearing enzyme. It gets rid of the pectin haze, makes it clearer, and it also extracts just that little bit more flavor from the mangoes because it breaks down some of the mango juice. So again, roughly just add in a teaspoon-ish, like so, and just sprinkle that in and give it a good mix around. Now, pectylase is a bit funny when it comes to temperature because it is an enzyme. So make sure it's under 20 degrees or 20 degrees. There we go. But this is looking really good and hopefully we're gonna end up with a nice clear wine. That's the idea. So uh, I didn't think about this. My hydrometer, which has been sterilized and just kept in fresh water, uh, isn't gonna go all the way down. So I need a little chuby thing. Where's my chuby thing? So I've got my tubey thing, uh, really handy. Had to quickly sterilize it because uh, I didn't know I was gonna need it. So I'm just gonna, since it's all mixed up, I can just take some of the liquid off the top. 
And let's see what it reads on the old hydrometer. Let's give it a minute to do its thing. It looks really nice. So the wine has settled out and it is reading 12% on the hydrometer if it ferments to dryness. And I'm kind of expecting it to. So that gives us a potential alcohol of 1.076. There we go, 1.076 on the hydrometer, approximately 12% if it ferments to dryness. So, pop this out. It looks good. Cheers. Wow, that tastes like sweet mango. Hmm, very nice. So the flavors are gonna get a bit stronger the longer it's in here and since it's going to be fermenting on the pulp all the way through should have a very nice tasty mango wine so the yeast that i'm going to be using in this batch is just gervin's universal wine yeast uh, doesn't matter which brand you get universal is universal so it's just a case of once i get in there opening it up and just pouring a little bit on the top so, since it's being funny. Oh, it's a pinch there. That's why it was so difficult. And that's us done. So what I've got to do, stick the lid on and close it on three sides. So I'm going to stick this out the way and we'll be back in about a month's time where we should have some tasty mango wine. Should be good. So, I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys, giving me some ideas for making some tasty mango wine. Ooh. So, don't forget to check out some of the other videos and, well, subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing. See you later. <laughs>